Hi, this is Rachel Cipriano coming to you again from Magnificent Resilience. Today I want to talk about the danger of having a performance mentality and perfectionism. Now I know of which of what I speak of because I describe myself as recovering perfectionist. And at one time that was such an issue in my life that if I got a 99% on a test, I would feel like I failed. I know that sounds ridiculous, and it was, but that was just the point I was at. And not surprising, putting that kind of pressure upon myself eventually took a huge toll in my physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health and kind of led to burnout and depression, etc. So I've taken many steps and been on quite a journey to reframe the way I look at so many things and have greater appreciation for self-acceptance versus uh, re relying on my performance to determine my temporal level of self-esteem. In other words, if I'm doing really well, I feel great about myself. If I make a mistake, then I'm in the pits. Um, the problem with perfectionism, there are many problems, but one of the, the deepest root issues is it leads to a lot of fear and anxiety. As I've talked about in other videos, um, the antidote for fear is courage. And courage is not the absence of fear, but is the acquired ability to move beyond fear. And we really need to do that with perfectionism and performance uh, mindset because here's the deal. Most of us have a desire to be personally and professionally fulfilled. And perfectionism and a performance mentality actually leads us to a dead end in the reach of those goals. What ends up happening in so many cases at, is that the person becomes so paralyzed with making a mistake and failure, fear of failure, that it interrupts their productivity. Sometimes that's manifested through procrastination. Uh, sometimes it's manifested through depression. Basically, it, in many cases, is a subconscious way to make us feel safer. Because deep down, we feel like, well, if we don't move forward with our goals, if we're not giving our best effort, if in fact we fail, at least we can have an assurance that we didn't put ourselves all in and find out we didn't have what it takes. That's the great fear. And so one thing I really emphasize to my coaching clients and to my audiences when I speak is how important it is to accept yourself. Mistakes, failures, everything in between. Somehow, as, as strange as that sounds, you know, so many people in some cultures think push, 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 self-criticism, criticize your kids, that will make you work harder and do better. Well, maybe that works for some people, but for a lot of people, that actually, as I said, leads to a paralysis of their will. So the difference is if you accept yourself, if you're not basing your conception of your worth on your performance, it actually brings liberty and freedom for you to take those healthy risks and risk and courage are just essential ingredients in success, resilience, mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual health. So I encourage you today to cultivate that self-acceptance. A writer that I really respect, that I encourage you to research, you know, he's considered one of the top psychologists in modern psychology in America, is the late great Albert Ellis. He spoke a great deal about self-acceptance and how it is just so important if we're gonna take risks personally and professionally and it frees us from so much of the debilitating anxiety, stress and depression that interferes with our goals and our progress and our resilience. 
Thank you again, Rachel Cipriano of Magnificent Resilience. Please tune in for more videos in which I share how you can be successful and significant in your daily life. Thank you.